Thomas Halleck here from the University of South Florida, St. Petersburg. Today's three minute lesson is about the journals of Lewis and Clark, which I'd like to use to discuss more broadly the literature of exploration. Basically, how do we read these colonizing accounts? And the first point that I would like to make is that the literature itself is massive. When Europeans and later people from the United States went into new lands, they would write down everything that they saw, the birds and the plants and the animals and the land forms. They made maps, they created a story. And yes, it was a story. And yes, Lewis and Clark, in terms of size and this accumulation of language is no exception. Seven journals make up the full Lewis and Clark body of work. So, ow! <laughs> It's massive. You can break a foot on that. And it's been winnowed down, sliced and diced and shaped into many, many different ways. There are guidebooks on how to follow Lewis and Clark. There are abridgments that take these seven volumes and turn it into one trade paperback, mass market paperback. There are CDs if you don't want to do the reading. There are picture books. There are historical markers, the list goes on and on and on, leading to the question, how is this massive volume of words being shaped into a coherent story? Meriwether Lewis was acutely aware of this very process, the establishing of oneself in the story. So on May, uh, on May, April 7th, excuse me, 1805, having spent the entire winter among the Mandan Indians, Lewis would set out for the Upper Missouri River. And he had been absent from the journal for some time. He had been absent from the journal for some time, but enters in a very conspicuous way. And I want you to think about how he is presenting himself. He puts himself with a narrative. This little fleet, although not so quite respectable as Columbus or Captain Cook, would still be as well recognized as those deservedly famed adventures. There is good and evil in store, meaning there is a story, a story. Also, notice at this important point how his language gets figurative. He said, we are about to tread in country that had never been touched by the foot of civilized man. We were about to penetrate a country on which the foot of civilized man had never trotted. Now the foot, of course, is a figure of speech. It would be a synecdoche where the part stands for the whole. Of course, Meriwether Lewis was using both feet as he traversed the North American continent. But more importantly, he was not the first man to come across, so the first, even the first woman to go across. Natives went back and forth over the Rocky Mountains all the time. By civilized, Lewis wants to say who is civilized and then who is uncivilized. Again, not much of a house guest considering that he had spent the entire winter before among the Mandan Indians who gave him and William Clark, his partner, exhaustive maps of the far west. And then what about the return? Lewis came back in 1806 with William Clark, the Nimi Poo as guides, the, the Nez Perce Indians, and easy cheesy lemon peasy, they went right over the mountains and then back. I mean, they had a little episode along the way, but that was really on Lewis. The point is, civilized, uncivilized, people had been in this country before. Think about the image there that Lewis had made in 1806, 1807 upon his return. He's presenting himself as the solo hero in the in the wilderness. But in this case, he's actually wearing a tippet or fur stole that was presented to him by the Soshone Sioux. Yet he is making himself as the heroic individual, the hero explorer. This leads to a key point that I would like you to remember as we go through the literature of exploration. How is the story being shaped and what gets left out? Where were the records kept? How were they kept? How have they been edited? recirculated? How are they being consumed and by whom? How can you peek around the corners of the plot to see a little bit more? A lot of people say that the Lewis and Clark expedition is a kind of symbol of America, and I would say, yes, it is. 
Many people participated in the Lewis and Clark expedition, and America itself is not a solo act. Thank you very much.